honeybees are evolving different mechanisms for, for controlling varroa mite populations. And um, some are more well studied than others, some are more well understood than others, and then likely there's mechanisms that we don't even know about yet. So most of the breeding projects going on in the world right now are really focused on a singular trait and are honing in on stabilizing these traits. Almost every trait that we're aware of that helps honeybees with resistance is, is recessive, meaning you need to have a genetically homozygous individual that received that trait both from its mother and its father for it to be expressed. And the problem is honeybees are prodigious outcrossers. And so all of these programs in the world are working on stabilizing this recessive trait. When they do so, they are achieving uh, changes in the behavior of the honeybee to their benefit with regards to controlling Varroa. But the problem is you take those genetics and you put them back out into the world at large where that trait's still not very common and it kind of disappears like sand through your fingers. And so um, while those programs are useful and uh, in helping spread those traits and get those traits out into nature and out into different populations, where hopefully they will stabilize over time, they're a little bit um, myopic in my opinion and a little bit tending towards a genetic bottleneck. Now the bees are working against us with that prodigious outcrossing I was mentioning, but, um, but the behavior of, of focusing on one trait might be inadvertently causing us to overly select for that trait and thereby lose some of the evolution of additional traits that are going on in the honeybee population at large.